three minutes early. Okay, now you can have it. Okay, so uh, this is up at my house now. You can tell by the incessant mess. And uh, this these are forged. Basically, what this is this is an ammo can. Um, you can get these on eBay or at surplus store or whatever yeah, you know. Yeah, they're not. And bad. inside here, from camera around here, we've got um, cable and cable a and brick. a fire brick. Um, what we did was we cut these holes. Where yeah. we did a hole saw, and then we used a reciprocating saw. Or you could use a jigsaw to cut these holes. And basically, the way this works is you've got your propane. It comes, you know, comes through this pipe, comes into here, and you can't see it, but this little pipe has a very small hole on the other side of it, and it shoots the gas down this pipe, and it gets ignited probably about maybe here-ish, and then it, it heats it up very well down in here, it um, gets it up to welding temperature. Um, if you're wondering, this is um, just the top of an Altoids thing we cut. A big part of this is make, getting your air-fuel mixture just right. Yeah. So this is to adjust the amount of air it comes in. It's a little um, difficult to work on windy days, but it's nice and still today, so we yep. should have a very good session. And then we got our anvil, our prize anvil. We got this when we first started. It's um, 120 pounds. 120 pounds, about 100 years old. Yep. Yep. And then we've got our post vise, which we actually have another of. Um, let's see if my dad was doing something. Um, it's just basically a huge vise that you can beat on. Come on. And, uh, yep. So, yeah. And we got our tongs, uh, rectangular stock, every stock. Yep, so that's our forging setup. So now what we're going to do is, is we're, we're going, going to, to begin the swage. So I'll come back to you when we get yeah. it all ready. clear. This is what happens when you use the wrong saw. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see that well on the video, but this is, I can move my hand both ways and it's fine. It's like literally flat. The problem is, is that these blades were not meant for doing this. So we're going to try, but we might end up using a hacksaw. Next clips here we'll be blacksmithing. Uh, here we'll be blacksmithing the base of our bolt to curve around in the swage so it will fit around the bolt. Okay. So it's not even cut at all. Okay, and this clip is just George forging the bolt head, and unfortunately this is the last clip that we got because uh, the SD card ran out of space. Okay, so here's the finished product. What we did is we just made a little thinner and we attached it to this three quarters inch dowel that we painted orange so it's a bit more visible. Okay, see ya.
Okay, we're gonna be drilling the holes for the rope to go through. And then once we get it through there, we're gonna use a washer, a uh, one inch wide metal washer. These holes are one inch, by the way. A uh, one inch metal washer to decrease the friction in between the dowels that we're gonna be used to cranking it, you know, we're going to twist it up. Um, to decrease the friction between the dowel that we're the crank and the actual side of the frame, we're gonna be using a washer around that. Um, it's still really hard to do. Believe it or not, we already did the other side. And uh, yeah, and then we'll be using some steel bolts to make sure the you know the dowels just go <laughs> once we're done winding them. So uh, yeah, we'll show you all that, um, and also there will be the process of just winding it through, which we'll give you an example of. There's, it's not that difficult. It's just that there's a lot of it. Um, we use for this distance, we use 25 feet approximately. 25 feet of 550 pound nylon paracord. I'm not sure if it even comes in any other kind of nylon, but anyway, that's what we use. Um, you can order it on Amazon.com for pretty cheap for the amount it gives you. Um, I would recommend getting the 100 feet length because you're going to need also you know, extra for the bowstring. It's just, you know, it's good to have a little more and the stuff's really useful because it will not break. Okay, so uh, now we've drilled the holes through here and here, and now what we're going to do is we're going to be gluing these one-inch washers up against them. I can't really see from that end, but up against them like that, and that's to decrease the friction of the crank to the side of the frame, so we can wind it a little more easily. Just let it be. Just let it be. So, uh, yeah, we just use some power grab stuff. You can get it from Lowe's. So, yeah, that's what we do there. It'll take probably, I don't know, the next five minutes to dry. Yeah. Um, about, five about five minutes. So, uh, now we're going to do the other side. So, basically, what you're going to do is, is a special, not really that special. It's pretty simple, straightforward. But, um, you just have to do it a lot. You have to go keep going through. And um, it definitely takes two people or some clamps. I recommend two people. It's a little bit better. Um, and then once you get it run through, you're going to twist them. Our other our other side, our other arm, we only twisted one and a half times. So that's a 360 and a 180. That's it. And we could not get it anymore. What I recommend doing is taking um, an extension of some sort of your crank that you can attach and detach relatively easily to give you more leverage. That's what we're going to do. We're going to use a PVC pipe that's uh, a little bit bigger internal diameter than the external diameter of our dowels. And we're going to use that, you know, just give us a little more leverage to wind it up. It's pretty powerful. It's got a lot of... the ropes will get rock solid. It's It's got a lot of force behind it. So, you know, use common sense. Don't you know, stick your fingers, you know, in spots where, you know, things are going to close and open quickly and snap, you know. So, um... Make sure you use solid wood for this, because you don't want this just caving in. Okay, so now we've sealed the rope, and now we're going to show you the tedious process of winding it up. Most of it will be in fast forward, that way you don't have to go through the pains. 
but we'll show you the basics of it. And basically, if anything that's in fast forward, this is just the same thing unless we stop to tell you something different. So, hey. So, as I said before, use two people. Anyone can help you. Though, I mean, they don't even have to be the person to help you build the rest of it. Just someone to help you. So, same right here. Okay. Oh, you're rope. Okay. So now, what you do? Is you take one end of the rope. You tie it onto one of your cranks. We used half-inch wooden dowels. We were probably going to change to metal because they're under a lot of pressure. Anyway, tie it around your crank. Slip knot of some sort. Take the other end and you run it through. Okay. So then, over here. Yeah, I think you can see it on the camera. You go over it. The string is going on top of the arm. Okay, and then when you come to the other side, you, go. you can't really see it, but you're going to go over right. top of the dowel. So you're coming over on the top of the dowel first, then you wrap around the dowel and, and come out underneath the bottom. Okay? See how that? See how that's underneath it? Like that? See? So then you're going to bring it underneath the arm. Okay? Oh yeah, and we're gonna, you're going to want to pull it tight after you've gotten to this point. Like, pull it all the way tight. Make sure you pull it tight almost every time you go through. You don't want any loose ends. Mm -hmm. So now, here we go. Pull it tight. As you can see, wait, is that a knot? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, yeah. It is kind of. Make sure you don't have any knots in your rope, too. We that will mess up your. It's kind of a knot, not really. Spring. Yeah, it wasn't really a knot. So you gotta do this. You should keep coming through. As you can see, it takes a while, but it's 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 worth it for sure. It gives you tons of power. So then you do that, okay? So now what you're gonna do? You got all this messy rope here. Try to keep track of the end of your rope. It'll. It's just over there, George. Because you know, yeah. it's easier to do that than try to do little loops and run it through like that. So now, now that's under it, you take this, the other end of the rope, and you're gonna put it through the bottom of the hole. And see how it's coming out under? Because we went under on this. I know it's looping over right now, so you can't really see it that well. But you'll see it as I pull it through. We went under the arm, so we're going under the dowel, and then we're looping back over. So. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy.
Thank you.